Nephilim, which means deserters, fallen. Literally, those who cause others to fall or lie are called tyrants in some dictionaries. Throughout human history, few narratives have captured the human imagination as deeply as the story of the fallen angels and their descendants, called the Nephilim. This story begins in the period before the Flood and has been a subject of fascination and debate for centuries. Our quest begins in ancient texts where references to the fallen angels first emerged. The Book of Enoch calls them watchers and describes them in detail. In the Bible, their first account is in Genesis 6, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. In the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 25, it mentions that the angel in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was like a son of God. So these sons of God are fallen angels, meaning the giants are their descendants. Only with the coming of Jesus Christ were we given the right to be called children of God. But to all who did receive him who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1 verse 12. However, the Lord observed that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. These mighty giants were an abomination in the eyes of God. Therefore the Lord decided to send the flood to destroy the earth, and only Noah and his family were saved. The descent of the fallen angels was not just a physical journey from the heavens to earth. It was a complex interaction of rebellion, desire, and pursuit of forbidden knowledge. These angels not only sought relationships with human women, but also imparted forbidden knowledge to humanity. This knowledge, ranging from the art of war to the secrets of sorcery, irrevocably altered the course of human history. The Nephilim are described as the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown, while in numbers they are referred to as giants who made the spies feel like grasshoppers. These beings over time were also seen by other nations and inspired stories of gigantic heroes and powerful beings in various cultures. After the flood, these giants reappear and are narrated by Moses. He had sent twelve people to spy on the land and bring a report, each of the twelve representing their tribe. Upon their return, they reported to Moses that they had gone to the land he had sent them to, saying that it flows with milk and honey. However, the people who inhabit it are powerful. The cities are fortified and very large. We also saw there the descendants of Anak, that is, of the giants, among other peoples. Despite these obstacles, Caleb, one of the twelve, told Moses and the people to go up to the land they had spied out. In truth, they were able to conquer that land. However, the men who had accompanied him reacted, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. The land to which we went to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, who come from the giants, and we seem to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seem to them. Even though they were fearful, they went up to that land and reached Hebron. The Bible even describes the names of some of these giants, Ahiman, Shishai, and Talmai, all descendants of Anak. Some years later, Joshua finished eliminating some giants who were still in Hebron, the mountainous region which the Lord had promised to them at that time. In Deuteronomy 2, verse 10, it is reported that the Emim also lived in those lands, a strong and numerous people, men as tall as the Anakite giants. Like the Anakim, the Emim were also considered to be Rephaim, a race of giants. However, the Moabites called them Emim. This region was also considered a land of giants, the Rephaim, who had lived there in ancient times. The Ammonites called them Zamzumim. There were many of them, tall and strong, like the Anakim. The Lord exterminated the Zamzumim, and the Ammonites occupied the region and settled there. The descendants of Esau expelled them and have lived in their lands to this day. In the book of Deuteronomy, they also mention Og, the king of Bashan, who was the last king of the race of giants, known as the Rephaim. His sarcophagus, made of iron, measured four meters in length by one meter and eighty centimeters in width, according to the measurement system used at that time. Og's bed is still in the city of Rabbah, of the Ammonites. King Og has additional references in the book of Joshua. The entire kingdom of Og in Bashan, who had reigned in Ashtaroth and Edre, one of the last surviving Rephaim. Moses had defeated them and taken their lands. Some of the giants found after the time of the flood were called Rephim and Anakim. The Rephim are mentioned several times in the Bible. 
In Genesis 14 verse 5, we find the first mention, where they are described as inhabitants of the region of Ashtaroth Karnaim, defeated by Kedorlaomer and his allies. In Deuteronomy 2 verse 11, they are described as a great people, comparable in stature to the Anakim. Other passages include Deuteronomy 2 verse 20, referring to a land considered to be of the Rephaim, and Deuteronomy 3 11 where King Og of Bashan is described as the last of the Rephaim. These mentions paint a picture of a people of great stature, strength, and significance in the ancient history of Israel. The Anakim are another people of giant stature mentioned after the flood. In Numbers, the spies sent by Moses report the presence of the Anakim in the land of Canaan, describing them as descendants of the Nephilim and of great stature. Deuteronomy reinforces this description, with the Israelites expressing fear before these giants. Joshua reports the conquest over the Anakim, eliminating them from several cities, except in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod. These giants who survived and were in Gaza and Gath, many generations later reappear in the Bible. At that time, the Philistines went to war against Israel, including Goliath, the giant from Gath, who had a spear whose shaft was like a weaver's rod. In another battle in the city of Gath, there was a giant who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in total. This man of Gath was also a descendant of the giant Rapha, and it was Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, David's brother, who killed him because he had challenged and insulted the people of Israel. These enormous men were descendants of the Rephaim, the giants of Gath, and were killed by David and his soldiers. The Rephaim and Anakim have intriguing connections with other cultures of the ancient Near East. Some scholars suggest that the Rephaim may be linked to the dead or spirits of the dead in Ugaritic texts, while the Anakim may have roots in Canaanite traditions and legends, there are some interesting similarities between the Nephilim and the Sumerians. One of the most notable aspects is the presence of giants in both cultures. The Sumerians had legends about a race of giants called Anunnaki, who were described as being powerful and feared. These giants were seen as deities or semi-deities, often associated with the stars and the sky. Furthermore, both cultures had legends about an ancient time when gods and humans freely interacted. The Sumerians had legends about the ancient gods who lived among them and were responsible for the creation of civilization. These gods were seen as much more than just supernatural beings. They were viewed as responsible for the creation of humanity and the development of civilization. These similarities can be seen as evidence of a common knowledge that permeated the ancient cultures of the Middle East. The legends and myths about giants, gods, and supernatural beings seem to reflect a common perception of a world where the supernatural and the natural coexisted and interacted. While these similarities are interesting, it is important to remember that there are also significant differences between the Nephilim and the Sumerians. Regardless of whether they were giants with enormous weapons of combat, the Lord's kindness always manifested His faithfulness from generation to generation. God confirmed His faithfulness even in the heavens. His covenant with His people was established forever. For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord? O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, Lord, with your faithfulness all around you? From the giants described in Genesis to the times of King David, God gave strong, powerful arms and mercy to people who wanted to fight for justice, truth, and honor to prevail. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name shall they rejoice all the day, and in your righteousness shall they be exalted. For you are the glory of their strength, and in your favor our power shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense. The Bible mentions that their walls and buildings were enormous but were not to be feared, because the faithfulness and salvation of God were with them. These same structures we see around the world like the lost city of Yonaguni, Stonehenge in England, Dragon's Lair in Greece the Moai of Easter Island, Tijuanaco in Peru, among other places.